Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Roker Report episode 9. From the unfamiliar voice, you might recognise that Damien, our host, has uh, he's actually done a victory in Ichibi and, uh, in celebrating our most wonderful of wins yesterday. He managed to slip over in the bathroom and break his ribs. So, <laughs> we're a man short today. <laughs> um, I'm joined again by Callum. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. Yeah, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Gav, how are you? Absolutely up a height. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Top of the world. You? Jim, how about you, mate? Absolutely fantastic, mate. Thanks. Super. So, if you have lived under a rock for the past sort of 24 hours, or 48 hours almost, by the time you listen to this, Sunderland managed to win, finally, in the Premier League. 2-1 win. A little bit scruffy with 10 men. But, Jim, have you got any thoughts on the game to start us off, mate? Well, it's just fantastic, isn't it, to get up and running and actually be happy on, like, a Saturday night. It was brilliant. I think we probably all had a bit too much to drink, and it was just a bit of euphoria. But um, the team, they showed just a bit more battle. Um, I actually thought we played pretty well for, for say, 60 minutes. I thought we were we were... We were really decent. We moved the ball well. There was a couple of couple of really good passing moves, and um, Victor Nietzsche was just unplayable, just absolutely class. Aye, he was. Uh, he was. He was. He was. It was the kind of performance that we haven't seen from a son and fall and as long as I can think. And that's not no slight on Jermaine Defoe because he's a totally different type of striker to Nietzsche. But it was. It just reminded us of when Kenwin Jones was really at his pump Aye. under exactly right Keane, right. and he was like boisterous, hard to deal with. Um, he would he would take two defenders out of the game because he was just that difficult to play against. And Anichibi was all of that yesterday and more. He was just so good. I mean, there was at times I thought I was watching a different player and I don't know if any of you uh, heard what Paul Merson had to say about him. I'm not a big Merson fan, but he got a spot on. I thought like when he when he spoke about Anichibi's performance, he watched our game for Sky mm-hmm. um, and, he, and he'd said, if you'd watched that game and not known who he was, and seeing how he played, you would have said, "Sign him for my team. Sign him now. He's that mm-hmm. good." It was it was one of the best forward performances I I remember in a long time. Like just so so impactful. He was he, he took his goal well. Um, he was a constant nuisance. He played with an injury, which to me, what I didn't really notice until the end of the game when someone mentioned it on social media um, that he'd even been been hurt. And and to do all of that on his first start. And to be honest. He was written off by a lot of people before we even signed him, probably me included. I, I wasn't mm-hmm. convinced. And he's still got a lot of convincing to do. But, I, I mean, to, for, a, for a first impression, uh, I don't think he could have got much better than that. Like, it was pretty pretty much a perfect performance. I think it was uh, it was just desire, wasn't it? It was just a, a, a desire and, a, and, a, and, and, like you said, bottle to just hold on to the ball, um, win the game. You know, that that's what's been missing this season. We wanted it more than Bournemouth, and and each of you wanted that, wanted that performance. He wanted the win, and he led from the front. And you know, I think that really spurred on the other players as well. The other players really, uh, I think, once he started to battle away, you know, he, he he basically made that goal. It's a great ball in by Defoe to his feet, and he does what he does best. You know, he, he people can't get around him. He backs in, he turns. And and lashes a lashes a shot from a really tight angle, and from and up until that point it had been, in my opinion, quite poor. I think Bournemouth had had the run of it. Mm-hmm. Um, they they maybe thought it was going to be easy after they'd scored. They seemed to take the foot off the gas a little bit, um, and I thought that was indicative of the rest of the game. They seemed to think that oh well, this is going to be quite easy. And and like I said, I think that that goal from Anichibi, um and his general performance as well. I think it. I think it not only showed his qualities. I think it brought a lot out in the in the team as well. I think the team mm-hmm. sort of um, sort of took took that on as well, and and it really spurred on the team to to have the same kind of battle. And you know, credit credit where it's due um, to the to the lads. I've been wanting to see desire. It's not been an issue of lack of quality for me this season. I know there's been a lot being made about there not being enough quality, but that team is better. Than two points from ten games, and and just, you know that, it's 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 the uh, it's the battle that we've all wanted to see all season. So credit just, to them. It just showed though, didn't it? And the amount of players who've been largely poor up till this point played well. People like Jilla Bod- Jilla Bodgy was fantastic. Man, Mount yesterday, I mean, wasn't he? Oh, he was. It was. But it wasn't even just. He's. It wasn't even just. He's like. Uh, how solid he was. He, w- he was winning balls and then playing them out well as well. He, mm-hmm. There was one where he slid through the player, got back on his feet, 
and pinged one at Defoe's feet on the wing. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 I could just see the confidence in a few of them grow as the game gone on. Yeah. You know, we 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 scored the first, and from that point onwards, um, there was belief there in the players because we had Bournemouth on the front, on the back foot for a lot of it uh, in that second half. And I know they they to be honest, if I think if Callum Wilson had played the front and had the chances of Fobia had. Um, we wouldn't be sitting talking about a sudden win here. We'd maybe yeah. be talking about a draw or a loss. But at, at the end of the day, um, we've been bemoaning our look all season. So has David Moyes, and he's kind of been, you know, castigated for saying it a lot. How we don't get any luck. Um, but in that game yesterday, oh sorry, on Saturday, um, we we just got everything. Mm-hmm. Everything went our way. Every single shot that you thought should have went in went wide. Pickford made some world class saves to be yeah, honest. Pickford was Especially that one. Oh, he was he was every bit the top class goalkeeper that he's expected to be, isn't wasn't he? It was it was like less of the Ars- the keeper saw against Arsenal um was exposed by his defence and he he maybe could have done better with a couple of the goals. The game the, the game he played yesterday, um you could just tell he was up for it. Yeah. He, and that that's a that's a young lad who's coming through the <clears> academy who knows what it means and he knew that we had a chance there. Of getting three points, and he and he threw up everything at making sure that we 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 stayed safe in the game, and and generally as a performance, I don't think anybody played badly. I even maybe you, you could argue Pinar um, nearly threw the game away for us, really, with with the, with his idiocy. I don't know. I'm to be honest, I'm still not clear on why he was sent off. I think it was for the tackle, but I've seen some people. Um, stay, say it might be for dissent, and it was a second yellow. I don't know if anybody. Can yeah, he did, I mean, he did. He, he did. Um... The referee took his time because it's a book and there's no no doubt it's a book. And he is unlucky because he does win the ball and his foot obviously bounces off the top of the ball, doesn't it? And it's yeah. it looks a lot worse than mm. it actually is. But the referee doesn't go straight to his pocket. He seems to wait a couple of seconds. Pienaar gets in his face, then he gives him a second yellow. Um, but he, I mean, he was okay for the first 59 minutes. I, I, he's not. A, I don't know if he's a centre midfielder. I actually said earlier in no. the season I think he should play there, and I think I'm, I'm probably wrong. Like after no, seeing I, him, he's played I on the wing his whole career, hasn't he? And whether he's you, a centre midfielder, I probably wouldn't not, play him there. Huh? Do you not think though, in in struggling teams, you can't carry a player who is like that? Like maybe if he's he was playing the good side, well. yeah. Or, you know, maybe if he was playing the side who had a, a stronger squad, you could get away with playing him in centre mid because. He would have players doing the dirty work for him, but in our team, ninety uh, percent of the job that the centre midfield players have is to win the ball and tackle, and he mm-hmm. can't do either. Um, he's very good in possession, and he and he looked good. When, he looked pretty tidy. He was knocking it five yards, and and he never lost it. Yeah. Um, but what he what he didn't do was tackle very well and, and intercept, and that that's why I don't think he's a centre midfield player at this level. I think. I think um, the fact he won't play against Hull might not be a bad thing because it might see you might even see Larson back in the team if Catmull and Kirchhoff aren't ready yet. Um, or <laughs> Rodwell, but I mean, well, we'll get on to that. I would imagine, but um, it was it was just a it was just a performance from a bunch of players who knew that they had victory yeah. in their grasp, and the, the, it's it's said a lot, isn't it, that um, teams who go down to ten men. Are harder to play against in teams with eleven men because it's always in the back of the mind that the the, the backs are against the wall and the fighting to stay in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I very much got that impression with us yesterday. It's even even in each of be playing deep than he probably ever has in his career. Um, showed just how how much they wanted it. Really, there were there were it was even the substitutions were made were like. Denier came on and he was absolutely brilliant playing centre mid for me. Like, yeah, he was. Like, he, he, every, oh, he deserves immense credit. He does, and I, I would. I, he's he was, he looks a much more accomplished centre midfielder than he did it, or certainly the fullback that he played. But uh, he looks like a he could be a half decent squad player, especially if he plays through the middle. One thing I would like to say is, speaking about the desire for Anita be winning the penalty, he actually looked like he had a bit of pace about him. You see, he looked. <laughs> He looked like he, he could move fairly quickly, and that was just sheerly down to the fact that he wanted that ball first. Um, I just, I really hope West Brom fans w- uh, warned us, didn't they? They said, "Look, he's he has this one in one in ten kind of player where he's absolutely unplayable." Mm-hmm. Lenny Gans missing. If we can harness, because obviously he's 
he's a big fan of David Moyes, isn't he? He's obviously get on with him very well. And yeah. He's keen to, to do Moyes, um, to make him proud because obviously he's taken a bit of a gamble on him. So if, if Moyes can harness that, that victory on each of you that we saw on Saturday, it could be a really good player for us. Well, I, I don't know if anybody heard um, Leon Osman on uh, BBC this morning. They do, they do a kind of like a football roundup thing the next day. Um, and it was I think it was one of the Custis uh, brothers um, kind of danced around the fact he played well and joking. He was like, oh, well, he, he's, you know, he, I'm surprised he played as well as that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, Osman stepped in and said, nah, he's quite capable of that. His problem's confidence and injuries. And the fact that he hasn't played a lot is what's hampered him. Um, if he can, And he, even Leon Osman said, if he's capable of that in every game, he just needs to be given a run of games effectively. Yeah. So I think he's he's pretty much guaranteed to start hold. For me, what um, was great... stupid if you didn't. What was great about it, though, was we actually finally played our strengths, didn't we? We said last week about the fact we keep knocking 40-yard balls up towards Jermaine Defoe and we expect him to sort of make something out of nothing. We, we were actually capable of winning the second ball because of Nietzsche, how we can... Like you said, since the likes of Niall Quinn and uh, Kenwin Jones, I've never seen somebody be able to control the ball that well coming down from upper height and bring other players in the game. We, we really lack that the last few weeks. And it links really nicely. And we got asked a question on Twitter from a guy called Graham Bowes. It's at G Bowes Baz's his name on Twitter. He said, why, why don't we play 4-4 effing 2 all the time? I really appreciate the Mike Bassett joke that he put in there. But for me, I don't think we played 4-4-2. I thought it was more of like... Um, Four three three at times, Jim. What do you reckon? Do you reckon it was four three three, four four two? What? what yeah, were well, you trying I, I, to do? I wasn't overly convinced. It was four four two. I mean, obviously, seeing the lineup, I thought it was. But I think one of you lads mentioned just before, before we came on here, um, that Victor and each of his heat map, he actually played a lot of the time down the left hand side, and and Jermaine Defoe certainly did drift out wide a lot of the time. Um, he actually he actually dropped deep, and all, all this season when Jermaine Defoe's come deep to pick up the ball has been we've been buggered because there's no one getting beyond him but now because you had Victor and be up there it just gives him such such gives us such more of an outlet that someone's so much closer to him I think for me it wasn't it wasn't the um, the formation that was that was really uh, an issue like you said I think in be drifted uh, like you said there was a very fluid kind of motion there were people coming short offering for the ball and at, and at times we were going long and in each of you was doing really well holding it up there's one point where uh Watmore scored that offside goal um but the build-up play like from right back we sort of touched it i think it was touched into what more um maybe on the right wing and he touched it back to jones who played it inside and uh and defoe was in a lot of space and there was a sort of a really nice movement to a nietzsche b and a nietzsche b played it back to Jones who was on the wing and he swept a lovely ball in and it was the best move we've probably played all season and it was you know what more sort of drifted out wide a bit but the thing that Im- the thing that impressed me was was um was the not necessarily the um the the rigidity or the or, or a certain formation it was the fact that the players um they all they all put a a, a shift in and they all seemed to kind of play quite well off each other and have a kind of fluidity but at the same time we were solid and and I think it did shift between sort of a 4-3-3 a 4-5-1 and then sort of a a 4-1-4 when and he, when Pinar got sent off it was very it was very fluid but at the same time very solid and and um it was it was impressive but like I said it's amazing how these how these things you know these bounces of the ball this kind of uh luck if you want to if you want to call it that coincides with um, with uh, with effort, you know, like <laughs> taking your chance, with taking your chances and putting in a good shift, you know, and that's you know, there's so many times where we haven't taken our chances, we've gifted a goal away, and and uh, and and we've looked kind of lethargic. On Saturday, we 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 put the effort in, we took our chances, and and several of our players had very good games, and now we're saying, oh, well, you know, we got the bounce of the ball. It's amazing how that coincides with with uh, with you know it's strong performances it's so, and desire so interesting you're talking about the the bounce of the ball and and look and this this whole idea of maybe we actually got a rubber the green finally we actually got asked a question on twitter and it, it kind of coincides with this idea someone said is jack rodwell cursed or just shite 
Now, <laughs> you've got to let me take that one, Tom. Go, Jim. Considering I have, <laughs> considering I have I know like, how utter much, disdain for yeah, him. <laughs> I know how much you love Jack Rodwell, mate, and I'm going to let you start. But I just want to say how, for a player who obviously struggles with confidence, that must be a real kick in the nuts, mustn't it? To see it the, rest, the rest be, of your team be able to come, ten, ten men on the field, uh, manage to, to win a game when you've played, what's it, 32, 33 now? With with no victory, but sorry, I interject, mate. Go on, go ahead. Tell me you know, how much you I love actually, Jack Rodwell. Well, I actually found out it's actually thirty five because there was games for City beforehand that they didn't win as well. So we can we can add a few more on there. But to be honest, you've got to feel bad for him. But it may have been a coincidence because he's not. He, obviously, he's been quite poor, but it did feel like it did feel like we did have a bit of luck yesterday, and. I, he, I do think if he had played, we probably still would have won, being my gut feeling. But um, looking at the the midfield three we played, or the midfield two, sorry, um, I thought in Dong, like Damien will be good, he's not here, because he actually took a shot for once, and he, he <laughs> did force a really good save from Arda Boric. But I thought him and him and McNair, had a, they were really solid. I thought they got about the park quite well. Um, I thought and Dong took a lot more responsibility after Pienaar was sent off. Uh, I was a bit scared that you know he, he did look like a rabbit in the headlights, didn't he, in past weeks? But he seemed to take a bit of responsibility and he got stuck in. So you know, it's really positive. It's interesting though that you say um, you think we might have won if if Rodwell had had have played. I'm trying to give him some. Um, you know, like, <laughs> be, in the build, in the build of the game, well. in the build of the game, Moyes was asked um, about what, when he found out Rodwell wouldn't be playing, and he said, "Oh, Thursday." So obviously since Thursday I've had to change things. So Vic that comes into the team. So mm. you know, would have an right? be Yeah, I don't. I don't even know if an ETB would have played if if Rodwell hadn't got injured. Well, let's and, hope he's still out for he's out for the season, then. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 on on um on one of the uh, more more notable message boards relating to Sunderland on the internet, um, a comment on our on our player ratings, um. And asking who man the match was after the game, someone someone posted on the thread saying Rodwell was his man the match. As soon as the lads knew he wasn't playing, it was a huge burden removed. <laughs> like <laughs> you have to laugh, like didn't you? It's, it's like it's. I, I know, I know what you're saying, Tom. Uh, Emotionally, for a player who struggles with confidence, um, knowing that the rest of your team managed to win the first game of the season and you weren't playing, that must weigh on you, like. It must. And um, and I'm not, I'm not fully convinced David Moyes even wants to be playing Rodwell like I think if he had the choice he wouldn't be anywhere near the team I know people I know people um, think that because he was his man Jarrett Everton when he made his break that he he's, he's you know loyal to him and all this but really when results are going poorly and you're not playing well loyalty means very little um, particularly in Rodwell's case I mean he's not I'll be fair to the lad he's not been by any means our worst player this season he's just very anonymous and invisible at times and and he you, you don't really know he's on the pitch a lot of the time no. um and i think without him there yesterday it freed us up to be a little bit more creative and we, we, we seem to put people i know it, it was more of the 4-3-3 um and again i'll go back to something leon osman said where he meant that he was asked about in each of his position and he said oh he always played left forward under Moyes at everton when i was there Said uh, that that was always his position under David Moyes. He played left left side of a uh, number ten. Hmm. Um, so there we go. You know that that must be his position. Well, and quick it brought, question. It, it, sorry, mate. One second. It, it brought Duncan Watmore um, into the game more. Than yeah. He probably has been all season because he had somebody to run off. Um, so uh, all in all, for me, I think I think the fact he played yesterday, yesterday was was. Obviously, the reason we won, like, because, and I don't think he would have started if Rodwell had been fit. So it's interesting, like. But do you think, honest, just as a just as a theory, do you reckon the teammates are obviously aware of this of this statistic he has? Obviously, Jack Rodwell's going to be aware of it, and it's going to be hanging. It's got to be hanging around his neck. Do you reckon the other players are aware of it and they're thinking, are there, is it is it tarnishing their opinion of him as well because they think, oh, well, there must be something in this now. You know, when they see someone line up and they think, well, this lad's never, he's Maybe. never won a game. I it think, must play on their yeah. mind, like. I think it doesn't. I mm. think from what I've heard from a few people, sort of like linked to the club who maybe get to see some of their training. In training, Jack Rodwell's meant to be an absolute world beater. He's meant to be absolutely 
quality out on the training field. They say that there's nothing wrong with them physically a lot of the time. But like, like we've already mentioned a couple of times, it's it's emotional with him in that I think we've, again, we've mentioned this before in previous episodes, but he's scared to get injured. Now for me, if if I've got this like Billy the Goat, Chicago Cubs style curse hanging over my head, I'd be busting the gut every week to like kick crap out of everybody, try and drag my team out of the mire. I've never seen that from Jack Rodwell. And he he must know about it. He must know how I think, many games I think, he's I think he looks on he looks uncomfortable whenever you see him play. He looks like his positioning's a bit off. I mean, I've said before, I I think he offers um, a a threat advancing from midfield, but it's it's his it's his conviction uh-huh. that that lets him down. And and under Moyes, we've seen the midfield not really getting up to support Defoe. Um, not sort of running past, not running past them. So I think Rodwell, you know, we've seen Rodwell score goals from positions where he's got beyond the striker, where he's arrived in the box, headed the headed the ball. He's got chances that way as well. Um, and I think that it's probably closest to what you might call his his natural game, but he he just looks um, uncomfortable in in a in a sitting midfield role. Um, and we have many players who, who, um, who, who just seem to 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 look a bit better and have a bit more kind of, like you said, confidence about it. And it's it's bound to play on his mind because apparently confidence in the mental side of the game is 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 his issue. So this this can no. only this can only make it worse. I mean, if if he struggles with the mental side of the game before something like this. The longer this goes on, it's it's got to make him further doubt himself. I think players, his teammates in general, I think we, you know we'd all hope that with them being professionals, they would they would not look at this as anything other than a fellow professional perhaps um, struggling with his game at this point in time. The, you know, like profession- if, he, if he was one of my mates, I'd probably take the piss out of him a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are right. Like to have I said, someone who's, <laughs> I said professionals, Gav. I said professionals. <laughs> <laughs> to have someone who is so mentally buggered, really. I mean, you know, because of all the injuries, to have this on top of that, you know, the lad just must. He needs. He must. He needs time with a shrink, not on the training pitch, really, just to sort his head out. There's another bloke. Like he that. probably has though. Yeah. Do you oh, again? Yeah, without a doubt. Oh, I... But there's another bloke at the club who uh, also has probably had a few question marks rattling around his brain been sitting in a darkened room the last few weeks apparently Gav do you reckon uh, David Moyes being up in the stands made much of a, a difference this week Um, I don't know it's hard to say isn't it I mean he's, it, Moyes isn't a manager who who hides on the touchline and I, I don't I don't know whether um, whether having a manager stood on the touchline is all that important to be honest because mm-hmm. Sam Aldice didn't used to do it and we did fairly well under mm-hmm. him he he would always be in his dugout, um, but I mean from from Moise's perspective, I think the fact he's been able to sit up in the stands and maybe see the game differently um, might have benefited the way that we set out. But um, Robbie Stockdale on the side was very vocal, um, very involved, wanted really to prove himself. I would say mm-hmm. because he had a chance to manage a Premier League game, and he's probably dreamt of doing that for a long time so um, he didn't waste his opportunity because we won the first game of the season with him on the side um, so it, I think it's pretty hard to say I think if you ask David Moyes and you ask the players did they make a difference they'd probably say no mm-hmm. um, but it's pretty clear that defensively um, people were barking orders a lot and a lot of that came from the side not from Moyes in the stand yeah. do you know what I mean there was a moment as well it came I from think. Billy Jones Yeah, a lot of it came from yeah. Billy Jones I thought I thought he was he was determined he was committed um, I never thought I'd ever say that about Billy Jones but uh, there was one in one in particular when I think it was Watmore gave a free kick away late on on the left hand side and Billy Jones is screaming at everyone in that back four to keep their line keep their line and I with with no John O'Shea there, I did worry that do we have anyone in the back four who could do that? It's really Most good to see. One, though, isn't he? Yeah. Most experienced head in the back four there. Exactly. Um, so he maybe, the maybe it was nice to see. Him. I think so, yeah. But it's nice to see him take a bit of responsibility. Do you know what I mean? He's he's played mm-hmm. a lot of football in the Premier League, and um, we kind of forget that, don't we? He's he's played most of his career in the Premier League, so 
you'd expect him to have some responsibility when he's got young and inexperienced players around him. Looking yeah, for a lot more to, solid, to look a lot at. more yeah. solid than Van Killer, right? Oh, yeah. right? Well, the last three games, without a doubt, I think the Southampton game in the Cup, he played well. I thought against mm. Arsenal, he was arguably our best player, um, even though he was... He, was, he maybe could have done better for their second goal, but he, all in all, I thought, at half-time, I said to me, mate, like, he's been our best player so far. Mm-hmm. So I've got to give him credit for that as well. And then at the weekend, he was, he was again, brilliant. I've not seen I've not seen anything from Mankio to suggest that he's better than Billy Jones. And I'm glad Jones is kind of hitting a bit of form because he, he really did struggle last year. He was in the team a lot more than people remember, I think. I think Yedlin didn't actually get in the team until he got injured. Um so to have him back fit um, and playing like he is is going to be huge. Like because yeah. he's got to he's got to show the form that kind of got him in England recognition at West Brom. We forget that as well. It was calls from to play for England at one point when he was playing for West Brom, playing well. So he's yeah, clearly, West... he's apparently a decent player. He just needs to show it more often. Hamstrings so... need to stop snapping. <laughs> yeah, that's... well, I. I... I rewatched the match back on, like, you know, the game of the day on Sky Sports. So I watched most of that. And one thing I noticed is I brought this up a few weeks ago when we didn't sign. I'm, I'm going to bring him up. I shouldn't. But when we didn't sign on Villa, I said one of the prob- one of the main things he did was when Van Arna, when walkabout, he was always there to cover and he dropped back in for him. Paddy McNair did that very well, actually. I, he, he, he's not the most gifted midfielder by any stretch of the imagination, but he worked his rocks off. And he, if you watch it again, he does drop back into cover for Van Arnold whenever he goes forward. So I think you can't underestimate his uh, impact. And that must be something they've worked on because Van Arnold's been dire defensively. Well, it's like I said at, at the top of the show, isn't it? There was a lot of players who've been rubbish mainly this season, played quite well in that game. He was one of them, you know. Um, yeah. And going forward, he's not a number now, ten, like Gav. He's not a number n- ten. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what he is really. I mean, I wouldn't say he was brilliant, but if he's gonna, if he's gonna be there to get the best out of Van Anholt, then you might be able to, you know, at least, at least give him some respect and say, look, that's your job. Patrick goes wandering a bit when he's somebody who's going to sit in and help. Um, but he was one of, he was one of three or four players I thought who who did better than have all season it was just a I, I, I wouldn't say it was a brilliant performance in terms of the football we played but in terms of taking responsibility um, organisation getting mm-hmm. stuck in um, taking responsibility was a big one like and he should be coming short for every single pass even though he's blown out of his arse after about 60 minutes was <laughs> was, uh, was was class to say like it's what we've been calling for for it weeks I've been writing about it for weeks just show us that he's care um, because we haven't seen it enough that's the first time this season I can safely say they've looked like they've cared um, and even though Hull won this weekend um, it's it's got to now be carried into the next game we've got to we've got to make sure that we, we capitalise on this momentum we don't we don't just let this be a one-off because it was too good for it to be a one-off yeah, it was too good from certain players to be a one-off. Jilla Bodgie now has got his place in the next game. First time set he's been all season. Mm-hmm. They've set the um, bar, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. If, if, they, they, yeah. If, they, if they come out against Hull and they don't do what they did against Bournemouth, they don't get. If they're not, um, they don't play with that endeavour. If Anichibi doesn't put himself about like that, if someone like Jilla Bodgie said isn't, he doesn't. He concentrated. Like the whole ninety minutes, he looked a much better, a much more accomplished player. Um, one thing we haven't mentioned to quickly bring up, Kone. I don't know if anyone's seen him. I think we mentioned on the group chat. Like, Kone didn't even watch the foes penalty. Like, he had his back to the whole thing, didn't he? He did, but uh, for me, uh, that's... sorry to have a negative. No, it's, just... <laughs> it's okay. Um... <laughs> no, I mean, uh, the thing about that, though, I mean, I don't think you know. There are some people in football who don't watch penalty you know they don't they don't like to watch their team take penalties and, and should have done better for the first though Callum as well absolutely yeah I mean he's you know he's, he's not with he's he's not immune from from criticism for certain aspects of his game you know like like you said about covering for McNair covering for for Van Onholt the first goal sort of comes down the right and and the marking's not good enough they're not they're not good enough tracking uh Adam Smith's run who who I really rate I think he's a I think he's a very good uh attacking fullback 
um and and you know that that sort of thing is is you know there were signs there were signs within the game you know i, I know it's really great we you know we're going to be really positive about it we won a game there's been some great desire and discipline and and organization and you know we've taken our chances but there were still signs yesterday that there's a long way to go and there are still um you know concerns defensively mm-hmm. um that that may be found out against a team like like gav said who have their first choice striker to choose from and who have you know and and who i think maybe don't take the uh the victory for granted when they go one goal up yeah um and so i i you know while we we definitely should revel in the victory and definitely should praise the players there were uh, there were signs that that uh, <laughs> there, there's a long way to go. Well, I'm se- I'm sensing a shift in tone. We're starting to come back down. To earth a <laughs> Let's bit get more. positive again, yeah. eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there was well, about 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 uh, about Moyes being in the stand. I don't. Know, he, uh, I think we talked about it in the group chat as well. But there was a point when uh, Robbie Stocktail's talking to to the players, and uh, and he rips his earpiece out just as Moyes is like oh, is, yeah. is is giving him a message. You think maybe he was Moyes was saying, Robbie, do you think we should bring on Yanazai? <laughs> Robbie Stockdale's like <laughs> Robbie Stockdale's like no get away man <laughs> rips his ears <laughs> out in disgust but coming come uh, off that idea of when we did say we're sort of maybe coming back down to reality falling off cloud nine uh, there was a question from a, a bloke on Twitter called Sam it's called Sergio3 his handle he says win against Hull would we be back in the fight Callum what do you reckon mate? are we going to be back in the fight with a win against Hull uh I, in terms of catching, catching holes, then yeah, absolutely. I mean, the it, it obviously it gives us, it gives us the three points and it denies them three points in it. And obviously, we can only look at ourselves and our own results. With you know, we I, I if we're not winning games, if we're not picking up the points where we should be picking up points, I find it quite futile to sort of look at other teams and ask them to do us favors. First and foremost, we have to win our games. And and if we win our games, it'll take care of itself. Is is always been my opinion. Um, I I think that um, it it definitely makes it look a lot more respectable. It makes it makes it look like a lot more of a competition. Um, we've got some players coming back. Um, like I said, there, there's some there's some good building blocks. Uh, you know, so anything possible. You know, we've seen we've seen ridiculous things in seasons gone by, and and who are we to sort of say that 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 can't happen again you know it, it, anything anything can happen with Sunderland you know it, it's uh it's absolutely mad you know we, we we haven't won a game all season and our managers sent to the stands and when we get a man sent off and we win 2-1 against Bournemouth who have a really good home record and come from 1-0 down uh, as well yeah so you know it's it's one of those things where um I think it, it if, if we if we win our games if we if we take care of ourselves if we put in performances like we did yesterday then of course it puts us back in the hunt, but um, you know we we've given ourselves a massive, massive task to do through our start, and and we need to accept that um, that no team has ever really recovered from a start this bad. So there's a long way to go, but if we can beat Hull, um, then we definitely put ourselves back in in, in with the shout. I would say. Yeah, I'm just yeah, meant to that. Sorry, you mate. Go on. I was going to say, like mentality-wise it would be unbelievable to get back-to-back wins. But if if we do a typical Sunderland and we go and get beat 1-0, or it's a, it's a boring 0-0 against Hull at home, I mean, we, I'm sorry, we just need to we need to beat Hull. Like, if you can't beat Hull at home, you get relegated. If we go beat Hull, it's two on the bounce. You start getting players like Catamore, like Kershaw back. Barini only just around the corner, start of December. I think he gets back. You know, of course we can get out of it. Of course we can. There's, we're not even in December yet. We definitely can get out of it. I'm looking at the table mm. right now. Uh, Sunderland and Swansea, just as bad as each other at the minute. And of course Hull, we all know Hull's woes. But ab- above those those other contenders for the, the, the bottom three in the trap door, I'm looking at West Ham, Palace, Borough, Leicester and Bournemouth. They're all within within striking distance, so to speak. That it's not as if they're clear of the pack by uh, by any means. Especially West Ham, Palace, and Borough. They're, they're they're six points ahead of us. Obviously, a win against Hull, and if if results go in your favour, that reduces the deficit again. Who who in this league are we better than on paper, Gav? Who do you admit? Is there anybody on paper that we are definitely better than? I 
think the point about injuries um, changes the answer to this question. Um, if we if we can get Barini, get Larson, get Catamull, get Kirchhoff, all playing uh, and and keep them fit through the season, which is a big ask. But if you can do that, then on paper we're better than a lot of teams, really. Um, <clears throat> our our issues all season have been stemmed from those players being injured. Um, Barini started fairly well, got an injury which was going to keep him out for a long time. That knocked us back. Um, Catamol, by all accounts, started the season injured, had a an issue which whatever he's recovering from now he's had over pre season. Um, Larson came back from the Euros needing surgery, and Kirchhoff, well, you just never know. His is a hamstring injury this time, but he's pretty renowned for being injury prone um, and if we'd started the season with all those players fit then we wouldn't be sat here talking about the relegation battle I don't think I think we'd, I think we'd be a lot better off um, so on paper I, I think I think we're better than quite a few teams it's whether or not we can keep our best players fit you, you, I know as, as well as in each of you played at the weekend if Defoe gets injured at any point this season you, you have to worry for us Um so it, there's a lot of ifs and buts, but having said that, um, I fancy us against Hull. Haven't seen them play a few times. They've got a lot of heart, um, <clears throat> but defensively they're not that great. Um, we've got two strikers in form effectively now, um, so you would fancy us to at least score against them. So you've got to take one game at a time. I think Moyes was asked about this. Like, um, do you? F- feel more confident about your chances of staying up and he said um, well all I'm bothered about is beating the team that's one place getting past the team that's one place ahead of us which in this instance I think is well, that's someone like that or Swansea, Swansea is it mm-hmm. yeah so well he's taken it a step at a time which I think is what we've probably got to do seeing we're relegated now I know I've, I've definitely said it in the last few weeks I've been pretty pretty resigned to relegation for a few weeks but the, the manner of the performance at the weekend and and the fact that we did win with our backs against the wall with everything going against us we managed to win a game shows that this team is capable of fighting and they are capable of beating t- good sides let's not forget Bournemouth at home have picked up 10 points I think already this season mm-hmm. I think that's the first time they've lost or maybe the second time they've lost but generally the home form has been very good this season and we went there and we won with like everything going against us and we've got now ensure that when we play teams we should be beaten or if, when we play teams where you, you look at the game and you go oh well we would take a point from this we have to set up that way Defoe said this last week we're going we're going to places and we're not we're not setting up um, in a way which gets the best out of the players we did yesterday and it made a huge difference like all over the park, confidence was better, we were more productive, there was more players shown for the ball, we attacked Bournemouth because all of a sudden we had someone to hit, and it was like, if we can carry that on for a string of games, get people back fit, then I fancy us, but it's the big if, isn't it? Like, can we keep people fit? The big thing um, for me yeah. is, if, if you looked at Newcastle last year, for example, I think they've had a great season this season, because they were able to find some fight towards the end of to the end of the campaign I mean they won against Tottenham last day of the season so for me even and there's a lot of people writing us off saying we're down even if we are down even if we do go down if we can continue to win and put points on the board and bring the squad together and you know really really show some fight and some determination then at least you end on a high note you either avoid relegation and we can all celebrate another great escape or you go down with some desire and fire and players who you know as fans have given their utmost. And you keep well, people, let, that's the thing, you keep people coming back, don't you? Well, let's, let's put it this way, right? Swansea, okay, are level on points with us. Mm-hmm. Um, they've they've played the same amount of games. They've won one game. We've won one game. They've drew two. We've drew two. They've lost eight. We've lost eight. They've scored ten. We've scored nine. They've conceded 21, we've conceded 21, and we're both on five points. Now, if you ask 100 neutral football fans, or do you think Swansea will go down this season? Or do you think they're already relegated? How many of them would say yes? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you've got to put it on paper and say, you know, there's a team in the league on the same record as us, and people aren't writing them off. 
you know, let's let's start thinking a bit a bit, bit more positive about it. We, we the, there are teams now we can catch. We can as early as it is in the season with a lot of football le- left to play. We win our next game, and all of a sudden everything looks great. You, you know? should be a motivational speaker, you. <laughs> I'm well up for it now. <laughs> How <are you? laughs> So really, we're in the last few minutes. I just want to ask a, a final question. Who, out of the two, I know we had a poll about this on Twitter, but who, between Victor Anichebe and Jordan Pickford, I'm going to ask you, Jim, who do you think was the man of the match? Was was Pickford's world-class save at the end enough to steal it? And let's not forget, after that save, he comes out and takes a big collection from a cross, takes off a lot of pressure. Or did Victor and each of his all-round action laden performance steal it for you, mate? Then each of a colossus. It's always an each of Like <laughs> it's seeing it, seeing a striker bully certain halves. As Gav said earlier, I've not seen that since Kenwin Jones. So. Um, let's give it to Big Victor. I think um, Pickford. I would have given it to Pickford if if it, if we'd have kept a clean sheet. But uh, we'll save it for when he keeps his first clean sheet. Cracking. I and I agree. I think it's it's one of those moments as a Sunderland fan when everything goes against you and you, you somehow come through. And I think that's what's people probably think we're delusional at this point, <laughs> sitting at the foot of the table, having done awful all season. But this is. It's almost like deja vu. We finally there's the carrot on the end of the stick saying that we can do it, and um, I think you'll all agree that th- it's the first weekend in forever that we've been able to be positive and happy at the end of the weekend. So let's, you've got to enjoy let's these moments. That way. Yeah, let's first win in six way. months. First win in six months. You know what I mean? I've forgotten what it's uh, been like. There's 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 a lot of things we've spoke about on this podcast which still remain. There are still issues in the club. Yeah. There are still issues with the ownership of the club. There's still issues with how much money we've got. But just for this weekend, just for this week, in fact, just until we play Hull, I'm going to savour it because <laughs> I've waited six months to watch my team win a league game. Um, and like you say, it's just it's just the hope that you can't stand, isn't it? Yeah. It's 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 an old saying which goes back years with Sunderland fans, but it's always been true. We, we, when we look dead, <laughs> when we look dead and buried like we have done, they come out with something like this and you're like, oh, God, here we go again. You know what I mean? That's me today. That's me yesterday. That's me probably for the next two weeks. I'm just going to savour it. And I'm going to leave us on that note because I think that's something that we all need to do. We need to sit down and savour this once in a once in an 11 game Premier season moment. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you to Gav, Callum, and Jim for another another wonderful insight into the world of being a Sunderland fan so cheers lads listen in next week we'll be back again once more hopefully discussing a little bit about the the international break which is upcoming again Um, so once again thank you again for listening this is the Roker Report signing off